Breadbox Media Programming is brought to you by... Introducing the redesigned CatholicSingles.com, featuring new ways that put the spotlight on the person and their faith, not just a profile picture. For the past 20 years, faithful Catholics have used CatholicSingles.com, and the reimagined CatholicSingles.com website is ready to help single Catholics take the next step in sharing meaningful relationships with other faithful Catholics. Remember, CatholicSingles.com, for faith, fellowship, and love. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Lisa Hendy and Friends. If you're listening to this kind of chronologically or in real time, you'll know that we just celebrated the beautiful weekend of Thanksgiving, and so it's really great to be back behind the microphone. I just ask for uh, your forgiveness for not having an episode for you last week. I just got so caught up in family stuff that um, I didn't have a chance, so <laughs> I'm going to make up with it, make up for it this week by having an extra super awesome episode with a good friend of mine, um, Heather Renshaw. And uh, I've known Heather for several years now, and I'm just so thrilled to bring her on to the show and to give you a chance to get to know a little bit more about this amazing woman. Heather is a wife and a mother of five exuberant children living in the mission territory of suburban Portland, Oregon. When she's not ferrying her kids around in her overworked minivan, Heather loves deep conversations loud singing, good coffee, and silent adoration chapels. She's the author of the amazing new book, Death by Minivan, which is available now everywhere that you love to get books. And she's a regular columnist for the Catholic Sentinel newspaper. Her passion is proclaiming God's mercy and forgiveness at conferences, retreats, social media, and any other way that the Holy Spirit sees fit to use her. She's an on-fire revert to the Catholic faith and has a special devotion devotion to Divine Mercy and our Blessed Mother. Welcome to the show, Heather Renshaw. Well, hello, Lisa Hindi. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, it's a treat, Heather. I was trying to remember before um, I called you how long we've actually known each other. I think it's like seven or eight years. Is that right? That sounds about right. I think I first contacted you in 2011 about coming to the women's conference that I used to do here in the Portland area. So it's, yeah, it's that almost, almost eight years, I think. Several lifetimes ago. Well, I know your story, but I always <laughs> love to ask my guests for my first question. Tell us a little bit more about your story, about Heather's story. Oh, gosh. Well, it began on a rainy day back in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> um, how far back do we want to go? Um, well, I, I'm i actually an adult adoptee, and that's something that not a lot of people know about me, that I was adopted when I was three years old, or three years old, three weeks old. See, I can't even, it's been such a long Thanksgiving weekend, I can't even get my facts <laughs> straight about myself. <laughs> um, so when I was a baby, I was put up for adoption and uh, adopted by a family here in Oregon. And um, they raised me Catholic and we were baptized, my sister and I. And really a good, pretty good childhood. Went to Catholic school until fifth grade and then we moved and went to public school. And gosh, that was sure a culture shock. Um, but, you know, that was back in the 80s, and so I feel like my catechesis, the whys and the hows of the Catholic faith, I don't really feel like I, I, it didn't really seem like it sunk in, you know what I mean? Like, I knew when I was supposed to go to Mass, and, and I knew that I loved God, but I didn't really understand why our beautiful Catholic Church taught what it did. So when I went away to college, which I know, you know, there might be some listeners who've had the same experience, uh, went away to college and gosh, I stayed up way too late on a Saturday night, and it was just so easy to sleep in on Sunday, and oh, I'll go to Mass later, and then one week led to another, led to another, and I wasn't super convicted about not going to Mass, and so I just didn't. Um, so it took a few years before I really um, came back to the faith. I had some people in my life who knew that I was raised Catholic, and I kind of self-identified still as Catholic, and so they would ask me all these questions, and unfortunately, this is very sad, I didn't really know how to answer those questions that they had about 
Mary and the saints and confession and the Pope. So I would go to my mom and I would ask her, hey, mom, why do we believe this? Why do we believe that? And she would give me the answers. But eventually she's like, you know, Heather, there's a book for this. There, there's a book called The Catechism. You can look the answers up after my <laughs> 19,000 phone call. I'm like, what? The catechism? The what is this? You know? So I started to actually really dive in to my faith because people had questioned me and I wanted to know the reason. And so I started listening to Catholic radio and um, had Catholic answers on all the time um, and just really strove to know why is it that our Catholic Church teaches what it does. And once I started to find the answers, I just fell in love all over again. And so it's just been a journey back to the heart of Mother Church since my, I guess, my mid-20s and getting married and wanting to raise children in the faith. So it's been a trip. So Heather, was that that kind of process happened before you actually met David and had the kids, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because when, when we did get married, I my mom had always said, you know, it's important to marry someone of your same faith. Um, my, my dad actually converted from being a Methodist to being a Catholic to marry my mom. And she said that that was one of the biggest um, pieces of glue. That, And I know that you, you know from yes. your relationship with Greg how important it is to share a faith. It's not that you can't have a marriage without that shared faith, but it's almost like such a beautiful cherry on top of the Sunday, you know, <laughs> to be able to have that same same faith practice. So um, I was coming back to the faith, but I think that getting married in the church and then having our children baptized, it was just a deeper um, journey into the faith. You know, it's like marriage kind of kicked things off to another level. And then all of a sudden you have children and you're supposed to impart the faith to them. And so I needed to know even more. So it just got deeper and deeper as time went on. And you guys have been on quite a journey. You're, you're, uh, since I've known you, you've lived not only in Oregon, but also in the, in the Southeast as well, which is really mission to territory and then back to Oregon. So, um, are you, uh, and how old are the kids at this age? How, how old are they now? So they're now a sophomore in high school. So Ava is 15 and Elise is 13. Noah is 10. Gianna is 7. And Colby is 5. So 15 (laughs) to 5. 15 to 5, which 5 helps keep 15 in perspective and 15 helps keep 5 in perspective. So I think that's awesome. (laughs) They're about the same age spread as I'm the eldest of five in my family. Um, And I think um, it was really good for me as a teenager to have a a young brother around that really kind of helped keep my head straight. (laughs) So. Well, he just kind of cracks all of us up, you know, because he's he's only five. And so sometimes the things that come out of his mouth, it's like, you're five. <laughs> you, know, from, you know, he was saying to, about his eldest sister, he's, he was talking about, you know, what he was grateful for uh, around the Thanksgiving table. You know, what are you thankful for Ava about? He's like, well, she's just very confident when she plays sports. And we're like, she's confident. <laughs> wow, you're five. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn that word? That's that's amazing. That's right. They're little sponges at that age. <laughs> That's that's incredible. And uh, and you're really before I get into the book, I have to ask you about just kind of David and, and kind of the path that the two of you have been on together with his work as well. Oh, yeah, gosh, it's been so amazing. Um, you mentioned that we lived in the southeastern part of the United States, and I can't think of a more different place to live from the Pacific Northwest than in the Bible Belt of South Alabama. (laughs) Um, We really were struggling because David didn't have full-time employment, and so just one day out of the blue, he told me that he'd applied for a position as a station manager for the Catholic radio station down in the Mobile, Alabama area, and I just started laughing because there was just this weird thing in my brain that said, he's going to get that job. (laughs) (laughs) There was really no reason to think that except for, I I don't know, I think maybe my guardian angel was just whispering at me to to get me prepared that I was going to be going to the land of the South. But um, yeah, he he did. He ended up becoming the executive director at Archangel Radio in Mobile, Alabama. And our family had a really 
amazing time there. Colby was actually born there, our youngest, and his godparents are there. We have a lot of really good friends still down there and had the opportunity to visit last year um, as a family, which was such a blessing. Um, But um, once you become a grandmother, apparently, you want to see your grandchildren. And so my mom, she, I think she single-handedly prayed us back to... <laughs> she was on a relentless <laughs> campaign. She was on a mission. I mean, she had specific scripture verses that she was praying over every single day to bring us back from the South. <laughs> and um, it just really, this is probably another story for another day, but it was kind of miraculous the way that things worked out. So David ended up coming back to we with a job. We came back for his job um, with the radio station up here. And then the archbishop, our archbishop, actually kind of poached him from <laughs> the radio station to be the communications director. So now David has been the communications director for our archdiocese. Um, under Archbishop Sample for, I guess, almost almost three and a half years now. That's amazing. And I, 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 yeah, it is a, a different show. Maybe you need to have David on sometime too, but I'd imagine the two of you spend a lot of time praying because now is not an easy time to be a communications director in the church. Oh, right. The PR person for all the things happening in the church. Yeah, definitely more of an opportunity to, to pray and surrender things into the hand of the merciful Lord. That's for sure. Absolutely. Well, it kind of brings me back to our main topic of conversation today, which is this amazing new book that you you about death by minivan and i mean you know that i have been a fan of your writing for years and years so i i'm so happy to finally be holding your first book in my hands i know it won't be your last book i feel like it's the first of many to come and it's so delightful and so special and and from the minute you take a look at the cover it just brings a smile to your face but as soon as you dive in this book is just so chock full of of truth and humor and goodness and i'm curious I'm curious, um, Heather, why this particular book at this time in your life, why this was on your heart to write Death by Minivan? Oh, well, you're very kind to say <laughs> all those wonderful things. I don't know how I can follow it up. Um, gosh, well, this this book, I think, just really reflects the life that I want to live. It's some of the life that I've lived as a mom and a wife so far on this journey. And I like to call it the journey in the motherhood. Um, (laughs) um, And it can be very frustrating. It can be very exhilarating. It can be extraordinarily beautiful. But um, I was actually in the shower. I don't know if that's where you get a lot of your inspiration. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's like the one place. Nobody nobody follows me in there. Uh, So I can have a little bit of time to think. And I was just wondering, because this title, Death by a Minivan, I just kept thinking, man, these kids are going to kill me. They're going to be the death of me. And then I thought, well, is that really such a bad thing? Because there are definitely parts of me that have to to go away. They need to to die to um, to a greater life of Christ. You know, if if our whole goal is to be in heaven, we have to be filled completely with love, completely with goodness. We have to be sanctified, purified, holy. And I am none of those things of my own volition. So like maybe these kids are really refining me as a wife, as a mother, as a Christian woman. Um, so Death by Minivan, I had that title for a long time, but I really didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. So here I am in the shower, and I'm kind of having this lament with the Lord. Lord, you've given me this title. What's it going to be about? And all of a sudden I hear this whisper, you know, not anything audible outside of myself, but just within my heart, you know, look at the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I want to be. I want to be that kind of a wife and that kind of a mother and that kind of a person. I want to be more joyful and loving and and happy and, you know, um, self-controlled, more patient for sure. And so I just started writing um, about those things and some experiences that I've had as a mom. And then again, it's some of the ways that I would like to improve and to bear some of those fruits, cultivate those fruits in my life and my vocation. 
So I love that um, the way the book is set up and just for people that haven't kind of seen this book yet, um, it's very much of a a working book. Heather, you share your reflections, but you also have um, signposts, you have, you know, prayers included. I love that you say GPS, God positioning system, which is like scripture references. Um, And then you also have, you know, discussion questions and tools and pit stops, other resources that you can use, roadside assistance, which is like quotes from the saints. It's the theme um, drives, uh, I guess I didn't say that on purpose, but it drives the book. Um, And and it's meant to be not just a book that you sort of um, read once and put away, but something that you actively work through. So how, how did you come up with a structure for the book? Well, you know, I have to give a lot of credit for that to my editor at our Sunday Visitor, um, Mary Beth Baker. I think there's quite a few books right now that are, they're being set up a little bit more like studies because, um, you know, people just don't have a lot of time um, to do things. And so if we can have a study and a book all in one, all the better, you know, and also encouraging women to get together in community. But I had a lot of the reflection part done, but coming up with the other stuff, that's a whole different type of writing, you know, coming up with um, tips and tricks and related scripture verses and saints. So that part um, came after, I mean, I had some scriptures that I was leaning on as inspiration and also some saintly friends, but um, actually putting it into this structure I thought, you know, wouldn't it be helpful if we just had it in a way that we could have it kind of as a template? You know, here's here's the reflection and some of the ideas that I've had in the stories, you know, the experiences. But then there's also these things that, that women can read on their own or with friends, and that will help them with further study. And so Mary Beth was really, really encouraging of that and then just kind of pushed me through because at that point I had already written pretty much the whole thing except for those last parts, which, you know, people who look at the book will see that's a pretty big chunk is that those last parts. So I, I had a little bit of hand holding from her on, okay, Heather, you can do it. <laughs> we well, can plug in these holes. Let's, let's go toward the finish line, literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a great hand to hold because Mary Beth is amazingly talented. I've never, I've never worked with her personally, but I've watched so many of the books that are being created um, with her hand holding, and they're really, really great. And um, I, I think it leads me to my next question, which is actually, I think most people who don't write books think no an author comes to a project and she's got she or he has all of this information in his head and absolutely ready to write every little bit of the book but for me I've learned that every experience of writing a book is really a journey for the author that you're sort of taking the trip you know kind of before your reader does and I mean in my experience of writing books I've never come with all the information it was very much like a study process of of getting ready to write the book and being you know so entrenched in it so what I think you're saying that it was probably that way a little bit for you too. What, how was the writing process? And I guess people are just going to want to know, how did you actually find time to write a book with the five kids and to do something that's actually coherent? (laughs) Yes. Yes. The operative phrase, something that is coherent. (laughs) Um, Well, lots of Jesus and lots of caffeine. Um, (laughs) Well, I have my my hat is off to my husband, David, because obviously I could not have done any of this without his support, for sure. Um, He often on a Saturday would allow me to leave to go to the library or the coffee shop and just, you know, pound out some some time on my laptop. Um, So, you know, it was it was really evenings and early mornings, you know, late nights. And then Saturdays, I tried really hard not to work on Sundays. And um, so I usually didn't. And I don't know. I feel like it's like any other thing that you really feel like God is asking you to do. It's like, okay, Lord, you want me to do this, but you're just going to have to create the time. (laughs) <laughs> because I don't have the, I don't have the time to do this. <laughs> so you just gotta expand space and time and um, change my brain and make it happen. Um, but yeah, you've written a lot of books, Lisa. So I I probably should have asked you if what I was experiencing was normal because 
like you said, I did have a lot of the information in my brain, but then when it came time to actually get it out on paper in a fashion that someone other than me inside my own head would understand, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I think a lot of it was just the discipline of being consistent and have, I guess, lowering expectations of myself. Cause I think I thought every time I sit down, I have to have a certain word count that makes sense, is readable, is fallible, is coherent. Um, but that wasn't the way, you know, sometimes I would sit down and I would type and type and type and type. And some days I would sit there and I wouldn't type hardly anything because just nothing seemed to be coming to mind. But it's not like when you're working, um, you know, like in a factory and you're, you're building widgets and you can just clock in and you're on the assembly line and you're putting these pieces together. And then at the end of, you know, your 22.9 seconds in your station, you've got this part of your widget done and you can present it to the next person and then move on. It's not like that at all, or at least it wasn't for me. I I really had to just kind of trust the process and trust that if I sat down and I did the work, that eventually it would all come together. And so I would say like within the last two two weeks is when everything started to finally just tie together and, and be more coherent pieces and, and be chapters of a book instead of just random musings all spread throughout various documents <laughs> and scraps of paper. And now you can hold it and go, wow. Yeah, I think the one of the biggest lessons that I've learned through writing is that, you know, um, you deal with the circumstances that you're dealt when you're writing and that if you have 15 or 20 minutes, you make the most of it um, and you don't right. sit around waiting for everything to be perfect before you dive in. It's kind of a little bit yeah. like parenting. <laughs> you deal you deal with what or you prayer. Yeah. yeah, that, you know, yeah. I, and, and I think that it's a great gift to... Um, produce something like this and to see afterwards, wow, you know, look what God accomplished through me um, yes. that I was oh a tool. God. And I'm just kind of curious about um, what the kids think about this. Um, you know, I know they're so proud of you and I know David is too, but you know, what, how the process has um, kind of changed the way that they see the work that you do, because now they're able to kind of physically hold something that you created um, that wasn't wasn't one of them. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a it's a book baby, not a human being baby. <laughs> well, I think the, the cover of the book kind of helps a lot because um, those who have seen the cover, um, my friend Christy Stevens, who's also um, from here in Oregon, did a phenomenal job actually of drawing me with the five kids. And so they look at the cover and they're like, oh, my gosh, mom, that's me. That is that me? Is that our dog Lola in the front seat? Yes, guys, that's it's totally you. And then they'll say, well, am I in the book? Absolutely. You are all in the book. And um, we had a, a Our Lady of Peace retreat house that you're familiar with mm-hmm. here in Beaverton. Um, they were so kind and held a book launch party. And so the kids were able to come to that. And I thought that was so so neat because all they know is that, you know, dad's making pancakes and mom's off at the library, um, you know, and then she comes home and is like, oh, I didn't get anything. (laughs) But then at this book launch party, everybody's excited about this book that they're holding in their hands, these words that mom has written. And I think it's something that maybe once they're a little bit older, too, and um, read the book for themselves, that that they'll see a little bit more, but it definitely is precious to be able to share something like this with, with my family. That's the best. It really is. And it's, it's so, it'll be so fun for you as I I can say as a more seasoned mom, um, you know, to be able to come back to this time in your life, you know, you think when you're going through the midst of those ages that you'll never forget every little thing that happens, but it's like life happens and things get so busy. So it'll be really wonderful for you that you have this as a, you know, a way to look back and remember. And, uh, and I'm so proud of you, Heather. (laughs) I really am. I really am. Well, honestly, a lot of this, I don't think I could have done without you because I think part of one of my chapters that's in this book, um, I don't know, it must have been like three years ago, I sent you and I'm like, is this a book? <laughs> is, is this part of a book? And God was just working, you know, it's all in his timing. So, you know, we just have to be open, I think, to listening to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and, and thank God for people like you to 
encourage those of us on the way who are a little bit behind and need a little bit of encouragement. So I appreciate you so much. Well, I think that, um, well, thank you for saying that you're so sweet, but I think that what you just said is so important really for anybody, whether, you know, you're interested in writing or you're whatever it is that you have in your heart as a dream, um, that you feel like God has worked in you, you know, just open the door to that and, and don't be afraid to walk through it. You may not, you know, meet the circumstances that you originally set off that you thought you were going to, you know, it may, your end product may not look exactly like what you imagined it would, but don't, don't be afraid to say yes to what God wants to do in you. Because I think when we give that, yes, just remarkable things continue to happen. And I think that's one of the reasons that I find so much joy in watching what's happened with the book, Heather, is just to see that, you know, this isn't the end for you, but it's actually just, you know, the beginning of whatever comes next. So I guess that's what I'm curious about now that this done, I'm going to give you six months to kind of recover and promote, but what, what's up for you next now that the book is available? Oh, uh, well, so immediately next, um, I'm actually in the, I don't know if I said this in social media yet. I am actually recording the audio book. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, it's so awesome, except that it, um, I've had some sort of a strange sinus weirdness. And so I tend to be a little bit nasally in my, uh, voice delivery as it is, and so I have not been able to record almost all month, and it's due November 3rd, 30th, so if the uh, kind listeners would like to pray for me <laughs> and my husband, who is being my uh, de facto producer, because he's got a recording studio in his office, um, that would be great. So audiobook is next, and then I do have a couple of writing things. It's almost like the, the gates opened, you know, with with this book coming out, it's like, wow, there's so many other things I want to do now. So there's a couple of projects in the pipeline. I, I'm hoping that uh, maybe the listeners will head on over to my website, sign up for my, my newsletter, shameless plug, hashtag shameless plug. And uh, then they'll know a little bit more about what's happening for me, but definitely more writing and, and more speaking. I'm going to be um, doing some local speaking and then next spring, I might be doing a little mini tour in the uh, New England area. I'll be in New Jersey and Philadelphia and maybe Washington, D.C. So Wow, phenomenal. So the yeah. website for Heather is realcatholicmom.com and, and uh, that's R-E-A-L, realcatholicmom.com. And that's where you can sign up for her newsletter and find the links to her on social media. You definitely want to follow Heather on everywhere, but especially Instagram. I just love following you there. I feel like I'm right there with you. And um, and definitely sign up for the newsletter because that's a great way of keeping in touch with, you know, what's sure to be lots of great stuff coming from Heather. Um, Heather, before we let you get back to the minivan, I'm wondering if there are any kind of closing thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners. Oh, sure. Well, thank you again, Lisa, so much for everything that you do, your ministry, and for all of the help that you provide to those who are in the, in the trenches. <laughs> it's a huge, huge thing um, to have those that have gone before, like you said, a little bit more seasoned that can pass on some of that wisdom and some of that seasoning to the rest of us. I appreciate you very much. Um, let's see. Well, this book really, honestly, Lisa, um, it was kind of a love letter that I wanted to write to every mom who is just in the trenches and who feels like she's drowning. And and it doesn't matter how many children she has, you know, she could have one child, she can have seven children and still feel like, wow, what is all of this about? And just those times when she's feeling kind of down or in need of encouragement. And this book was really meant as an opportunity for her to see how all of the sacrifices that she makes mean something in the grand scheme of things. They mean something with regard to her sanctification and vocation. They mean something for her family. So I hope that women will will read and, and be inspired and maybe, you know, uplifted, have a couple of laughs <laughs> over this book and, and especially do it with girlfriends because I think it's so important for friends to get together, you know, especially in our in our world where online seems like the thing, but man, there's nothing like getting together in real life with a girlfriend and a cup of something, you know, coffee or tea and and just talking about real life 
stuff. There's just nothing like it. So I hope that um, that they'll be encouraged by, by this book. And I'm praying for all the moms out there because Lord knows we need it. <laughs> And if you're not a mom and you've hung with us through the whole podcast, you know a mom. So definitely (laughs) head out. Heather, thank you so much. Again, our guest today has been Heather Renshaw. The name of the book is Death by Minivan from Our Sunday Visitor. You can get it at your local Catholic bookstore at osv.com at Amazon. We'll definitely have links in our show notes wherever you're listening for you to get a hold of this book. Heather, God bless you and the family. I hope you guys have an amazing Advent and a beautiful Christmas. And just thank you for being my friend. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. Your friendship means the world to me. God bless you and everything that you're doing. Thanks, Heather. Well, friends, that is it for this week's podcast. As always, um, I hope that you can share the podcast, maybe leave us a rating or review over at iTunes. And definitely, if you'd like to share some feedback with me, you can always send me a little voicemail on your phone or just reach out to me at lisa at catholicmom.com. And until next week, I wish you and yours all the best. Have an amazing, awesome week. God bless, friends. See you next time. Redbox Media Programming is brought to you by Jack Kane Ford. Find your next Ford Tough vehicle at KaneFord.com. Woodhill Community Center. Have a hand in the heart of the city. Support their mission with your donations at WoodhillCommunityCenter.org. Toyota in Nicholasville Superstore. Online consultants are standing by right now to help you find your next Toyota. Visit ToyotaOnNicholasville.com. Lexus of Lexington, home of the best-selling Lexus IS. Find yours today at LexusOfLexington.com.